Hello and welcome to the Comlex Instant Review. Today's topic is COPD. Let's review some of the clinical features of COPD. Uh, typically, in COPD, there's an insidious long-term process that typically occurs um, in patients who smoke and they develop a mild but asymptomatic change initially in their small airways. Um, as the smoking progresses, there's chronic cough and symptoms that suggest an upper respiratory infection. When the smoking has reached um, a prolonged period, then there's significant bronchial disease that's characterized by airway obstruction and it produces dyspnea on exertion. Again, what happens here is that there's two types of syndromes under COPD and patients with emphysematous dyspneic or type A COPD are referred to as pink puffers and those with um, bronchitic tussive or type B COPD are referred to as blue bloaters. Pink puffers have predominant emphysema and show symptoms at a relatively old age. Uh, there is progressive exertional dyspnea, weight loss, and little or no cough. Also the pulmonary function test revealed mild hypoxia, hypocapnia, hyperinflation, decreased diffusing lung capacity, only a mild increase in airway resistance, and a little improvement in airflow after treatment with bronchodilators. The patients usually undergo slow progressive downhill course. Now, it's important to understand the difference between blue bloaters. Blue bloaters have a predominantly chronic bronchitis type of a progression, and patients have chronic cough, episodic dyspnea, and weight gain. Uh, wheezing and ronchi are frequently heard, and there's core pulmonale, often, often seen. Um, patients also complain of hypoxia, hypercapnia. On pulmonary function tests, you can see these signs. Also, polycythemia, elevated airway resistance, improved airflow after treating with bronchodilators, and relatively preserved lung volumes and diffusion capacity. And pathologically, there is minimal emphysema, but significant bronchi bronchiolitis, bronchitis, mucous gland hyperplasia, and also right ventricular hypertrophy. This is in contrast to pink puffers, in whom the major finding is uh, emphysema with little or no airway inflammation. Again, patients with emphysema have proportional and matched losses of ventilation and perfusion, and hence are spared uh, severe hypoxia. Again, in contrast, patients with chronic bronchitis have marked ventilation perfusion mismatch and therefore they have severe hypoxia. The hypoxia in chronic bronchitis is worsened by the hypercapnia, which may be the result of an acquired or congenital reduction in central respiratory drive or the respiratory muscle fatigue. Also, although the definitions for the two types of COPD are useful, um, it's important to understand that the diagnosis of COPD um, takes into consideration several factors. For example, COPD in middle-aged smokers can be diagnosed by using the spirometric screening. On physical exam, the findings might include hyperinflation, poor diaphragmatic movement, use of accessory muscles of respiration, and decreased breathing sounds and wheezing on auscultation. The chest x-ray may show hyperinflation, loss of vascularity, a flattened diaphragm, and a small heart. Objective documentation of expiratory flow obstruction by pulmonary function testing remains a necessary criteria for the diagnosis of COPD. Also, the loss of one second forced expiratory volume, the FEV1, is about 50 to 75 in a typical patient with COPD as compared to a normal decline in pulmonary function of approximately half that rate. Keep in mind that um, the therapy for COPD includes um, several things. Patients usually benefit from bronchodilation and so it appears that 15 to 20 percent of COPD patients in uh, this category have reversible airflow obstruction and overall, most patients with COPD show improvement in pulmonary function after sufficient bronchodilator therapy. The two major classes of bronchodilators currently available include the beta adrenergic agonists and the xanthines. Now, these agents may be used separately or in combination. Also, corticosteroid use. The use of corticosteroids to treat bronchospasm associated with COPD um, 
is recommended in some cases and sputum mobilization management of infection pulmonary rehabilitation all these are necessary factors some of the complications of COPD include pneumonia occurring in COPD patients respiratory failure bronchiogenic carcinoma and the predisposition uh, for peptic ulcer disease that was a quick review of some of the key topics you want to understand. Really, the boards will want you to know the difference between a pink puffer and a blue bloater, and the proper diagnostic tests and the general criteria for treating COPD. Please visit comlexflashcards.com for additional lectures and good luck in your preparation for the boards.